Welcome to Nifty 50 Photographers. I wanted to do something a bit different in today's video. I wanted to combine motorbiking and photography. Now, I'd really love your feedback on this video. So please tell me in the comments if you like this idea of uh, seeing a bit of my motorbike journey and uh, how to use your camera as well. And uh, I can make some more. I live in a great part of the world for, uh, for motorbiking as well as photography. Um, what we'll do, we're going to have a little ride out on the bike to a place called Ribble Head, which is in North Yorkshire. There's a magnificent uh, viaduct there, and I wanted to put that in the background. And when we get there, I'm going to show you uh, how you should set your bike up, uh, because I felt that is when I looked online looking for other videos, I felt that was one of the things that was lacking in the instruction. Then I'll go through all the camera settings and a little bit about lighting. And at the end of it, I'll just share with you what I learned about photographing my, my bike. Before we jump on the bike though, I need to do a little bit of planning to work out where we should position the bike and what equipment to take with us. Obviously you don't want to take a lot when you're just putting it in, uh, in your luggage on a motorbike or maybe just carrying it on your back. So one of the first things I did was I took a look on Google Maps. I knew I was going to be doing this in the afternoon, so at that point I could uh, check where the sun was. So I also used a little app called Photopills, see where the sun would be. And I knew I needed to be on the west side of the, uh, of the aqueduct. Having established that, when I looked on Google Maps, I could get a feel for the kind of place I could go, particularly when you look at the satellite view or the street view. And I found this nice little track, and I thought, now then, what lens am I going to have to use to try and get some of the uh, aqueduct in the background, but keep my bike looking really sharp and a sexy bit of the photo. And in the end, I decided I would go with my 70 to 200. And what I actually did actually was I measured the distance on Google Maps uh, and checked out how far the bike would be from the viaduct before I even got there. Now, if you don't know how to do that kind of stuff or how to use things like photo pills, check out this video I've got where I did some, uh, actually at the same location, where I did a, a, a video on how you can plan your location shoot before you get there. And it really helped you. Uh, to take the right equipment and know what to expect when you get there. Having done all that planning, let's jump on the bike and uh, head on off to a place called Ingleton in North Yorkshire. We're going to ride the road between Ingleton and Hawes. It's a fabulous road. For those of you who want the road number who might want to go there with your bike, it's the B6255 and it doesn't really matter which direction you ride it in. It's got lots of nice sweeping curves and straights uh, that you can really have a lot of fun on your bike with. Now I'm riding BMW F900XR, which is uh, great for carrying a bit of luggage and a bit of touring on. And I really love the bike and I hope you enjoy the journey with me. Let me tell you a little bit of a history about the viaduct because I think it's quite an interesting structure. It actually started construction in 1869 and they didn't finish till 1874. And in fact, it wasn't even open till, to passenger traffic till 1876. And it took some 2,300 men to build this amazing structure. Unfortunately, at least a hundred of them died, and not only because of the terrible health and safety conditions, but also they lived in camps nearby. Many of them had issues with hygiene, and people caught things like smallpox. And if you visit the local churchyard, you can see many of the graves of some of the workers. I'm going to ride by the uh, viaduct just so you can get a view from the other side. So I am, although I'm going to photograph it from the west, we'll just go uh, a little bit further east, turn around, and then you can get a nice view of it as we come back. It consists of some 24 arches, all which have about a 45 foot or 14 meter span. And at the top, it's about 104 feet or around about 30 meters from the uh, valley floor and in total length 440 yards or 400 meters so really one of the uh, most impressive uh, viaducts we have in this country now i found this little back road when i was looking on google maps and i'm hoping it's going to be nice and quiet actually not as quiet as i hoped and i'll show you that right at the end if you want to see the uh, kind of outtakes i've done 
and uh, it just leads up to uh, I think a holiday cottage and a farm so I wasn't expecting many cars to go up and down it was reasonably quiet but I did get caught out a couple of times so I'm going to ride along here to the location I picked and uh, then we'll start talking about how to set your bike up I've got to my location that I'm happy with and uh, First thing I'm going to do is have a good walk around the bike and see which angle I want to take it from. So here we are. And I've got a few options. So I could take a shot completely sideways on. Another option would be to take one head on and that would play perhaps with the steering a bit, straighten that up, might look a bit better. What I don't want to do take one from this side so this side is facing into the Sun so it creates much more of a silhouette and I've got harsh lighting right behind me so uh, might be interesting if the Sun was a lot lower but I think with such harsh sunlight at the moment that's not the one I want I've deliberately part the bike facing into the Sun so that it's uh, providing light in this area here if you haven't got that if that's in shadow you can use a reflector or even a little video light to light that up. So let me just tell you about your camera settings. Now with a motorbike it isn't that big. So you don't need a uh, really narrow f-stop to get everything in focus front to back. You can probably use something quite narrow and I want to actually don't want the background to be too distracting. Just want it to be an interesting backdrop. So I'm going to choose Actually, I'm going to play around, probably do somewhere f2.8, some around f4, and maybe in between, and uh, take the selection. Also going to shoot portrait and landscape. Now, if you're doing portrait for Instagram, I'm going to put the bike right in the middle of the frame, because that'll uh, be how I want to crop it in the end, and it'll suit the format. I'm going to shoot very low down as well. Try that, you know, really bend your knees. I'm actually going to lie on the ground, I think, as long as we don't get too much more traffic. And, and I'm going to do a few shots, sort of slightly side, slightly angle, and I'll probably do one looking pretty much head on. So uh, my ISO 100, I'm going to set it actually to aperture priority. I'm going to use a spot focus, and I'm going to focus somewhere where it says something like XR or the BMW logo somewhere round about there so uh, let's see if we can get a few shots I wanted to review the shots with you and just talk through what I've learned I think it's an interesting exercise for you to do after you've taken some photos analyze what worked and what didn't so one of the other things that uh, I, I didn't mention earlier on but I did when I was planning actually was look at BMW's own marketing photos for this bike to get a feel for what angles and how they set the bike up and uh, this is uh, how I sort of base the setup for, for myself when I got there. And now this is the first shot. Now, I was thinking about taking both shots uh, for myself and also for using in things like my Instagram page. So I wanted shots that would be uh, either landscape and portrait. Now for things like Instagram, you want them probably portrait or square. Now this first shot is a landscape shot and you can see the settings I've chosen f2.8 and I'm about 70 millimeters on my lens. And I've turned the bike wheel very slightly towards me. I've got the bike at a bit of an angle and I'm sort of in line with the XR logo you can see on there. So I'm at about, I don't know, 10, 15 degrees off axis off the, uh, off the bike looking straight back at it. And I think this works pretty well. You can see I've got a very wide aperture, f2.8, but actually the bike is pretty sharp from front to back. So that's been okay. And the background as uh, of the viaduct is, uh, is nicely blurred, so it's not distracting too much from, uh, from the main subject. Now BMW in their own marketing literature put the wheels absolutely straight. So I wanted to take this shot as well. And in all honesty, I think I preferred it. Not surprising that the, those guys have got it right. They probably do this every day. And so it's a very similar setup. I did change um, the aperture just in case my depth of field wasn't good enough. And it's a little bit hard to tell on the back of your camera. So I did this really for my own peace of mind. Uh, I think I've taken it pretty much in the same position. And really I think 
that's the shot I've cleaned it up a little bit in Photoshop taken out the uh, the number plate and uh, and moved some more grass back in just to make it look a bit more attractive and I'm really pleased with the final result of this and here are the two shots side by side so you can make your own comparison I really do prefer the wheel straight on I think partly because the uh, the whole front cowling doesn't move it's uh, it's just the uh, just the wheel turning as you turn the handlebars so I think it looks better with everything straight on apart from the little bit of condensation in the headlights but that's another argument I need to have with BMW not with you guys so now I started thinking about shots for Instagram so here very much the bike has to be right in the center of the frame and I started with a, a fairly squarish format I've left the uh, the wheel turned and uh, as you can see I've gone a little bit closer in and again I'm pretty happy with the shot and it's taken f4 and because I'm uh, 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 the bike is fairly flat on towards me I'm sort of 10 degrees off axis probably uh, it's reasonably sharp so I'm happy with the f-stop for that and in the next shot I've gone a bit more of a portrait style I've moved round so I'm a little bit closer to the front of the bike so at less of an angle which means the bike is going more deeply into the frame and here the f4 um, aperture is not really giving me quite enough depth of field if I look closely at the back of the bike it's starting to lose its sharpness so I probably should have gone up one or two stops just to uh, get the bike sharp from front to back and this is pretty much the same shot but with the wheels straightened up perhaps a slightly tighter crop but uh, I think it looks again better with the wheel straight um, I've got the same problem with my depth of field. It's lacking a little bit right at the back of the bike. I think I get away with it in this shot because uh, the front of the bike is, dominates the scene very much and it doesn't matter too much that you're drifting away. But if it was being hypercritical, I'd reshoot that again at probably f5.6 or 6.3 and just bring the back of the bike into focus. And this is really happening because your depth now in the scene has got greater than when the bike was turned sideways on. And then for this final shot I just wanted to show you the effect of moving yourself up and down so I've taken this is a shot I've taken lying down um, the depth of field issue is obviously still there but I think it's made the shot a lot more dramatic because I'm a much lower in the scene here uh, you know I'm probably level more with the pegs than the uh, than the BMW badge for example and uh, that makes the bike a bit more feels a bit more aggressive in the photo so it's changed the mood of it a little bit so it's well worth playing around with uh, where you stand and you know changing your height I would certainly recommend that you always start round about tank height and work your way down rather than going higher I think that's worked better but try both one or two bikes an overhead view can look really spectacular too I hope you really enjoyed that video and uh, please do let me know if you'd like to see some more like this in the comments if you wanted me to do some more bike roads I live on the edge of the Lake District down the Yorkshire Dales sort of in between the two so I've got some lovely roads to ride that I can share with you and we'll take a camera and uh, see if we can find some nice scenes and show you my thought process as I go out taking photos if you enjoyed the video please remember to give it a like if you want to see some more subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you next time.